God bless you, everyone. Um, <laughs> back to talk to you more about the Pope. One of the one of the decisions which they have made is um, they have decided that they they spoke about the different names and the reasons why popes pick different names, and apparently the cardinals or the the people who are going to be be responsible for picking the next pope have said that by no means will he be picking the name Peter because they see it as being, I guess, sort of disrespectful to Peter who um, started the church. And then they also mentioned that one of the reasons is because they don't want, um, because of St. Malachi's prophecy and how it says that it will be the last pope ever, and so they don't want that to happen. And it's just funny to me because I've thought to myself and I've been kind of keeping a lot of what was being ministered to me or what was in my spirit to myself, but I figured that they would start the actual preliminary vote, preliminary like discussions either March 1st or March 4th. I figured that they would probably start the um, actual conclave on March 11th because March 11th is the first of Nisan or the first of Abib, um, which is the biblical name for the first month of the year. So technically Monday is the actual new year because in God's calendar, Abib is the first month. It's the only month that does not have a number. It has a name, and it, the name means the ripening or the beginning, the springtime. It's the beginning of the year. It's the first month of the year, and the, the new moon of the first month of the year will be um, on Monday or technically Sunday night. So that will be March 11th, and of course we know all the significance with the number 11. Um, but they may also do, they said within the first, the beginning of the week, they're going to do the conclave. So it could be from what they have said in the media, um, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, of course, Wednesday is the 13th. So we also know about all of what that means. I do want to say that Peter, the apostle, did speak to certain Gentile people in the the Bible, um, I think on one occasion, as far as what's written in the Bible, and then he was sent to um, the Israelites who had been scattered um, amongst all the nations, and of course they have mixed with the nations, and um, it's almost like you had two groups of Gentiles. You had Gentiles who were non-Israelite, and then you had Gentiles who were Israelite, and they were scattered all over the world, as I said. Um, it is believed that even like in Japan, the Makuya tribe, and in Nigeria, the Igbo and the Yoruba, and in um, Ghana, the, the Ashanti. Now that's going to lead me to how some people will say, well, the Pope, I mean, the false prophet or whatever, he's going to be a Jew, etc. Well, let's take Peter Turkson, for example. He is from Ghana. He is from the Ashanti tribe. The T-I in, Ashant in Ashanti means the same thing as the I-M in Nephilim or um, like the I-T in Israelite or Amorite. It means the people of. And so Ashanti means the people of Ashen. And it's speaking about, and Ashen means the burnt city, but it's speaking about a city that was in Judah. So the people of Ashen are possibly Jews or more likely from the tribe of Simeon, because the city of Ashen, although it was in the territory of Judah, it belonged to the tribe of Simeon. More than likely, it was a mix. They probably would have mixed with the, the tribe of Yehuda, or the tribe of Judah, or the Jews. Um, the Jews also mixed with the Levites, and some mixed with the um, Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, the Benjamites. And so, of course, because of that, you could have a variety of mixes. <laughs> you could be from the tribe of Judah, but have some of the other three tribe, tribes I mentioned, Benjamin, Levi, and Simeon, in your blood. And because, of course, the Israelites mixed with each other and other non-Israelite tribes. So his bloodline comes from Israel. He's, an, his, his, he's a bloodline descendant of the Israelites. Many of the people in West Africa and African-American people originated in Israel because West Africa was uninhabited. There was no people there. Kush was more East Africa, and then you had in the northern parts, you had um, Misraim and Put. Cain was supposed to be in West Africa, but he stayed in the Middle East. And then some of his descendants traveled further east, like his children, the Zenites or the Sinites, um, which Zen 
or sin is still the way you say China in Arabic because the Chinese come from the Zenites and the Zenites are Canaanites. So I just say that to say this. You can't say, oh, this person could never be the Antichrist or this person could never be because he's not a Jew or he's not this or he's not that. You know, um, people say Barack Obama is not the Antichrist because he's not this or he's not that and they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know that Kenya was really a part of British territory when he was born there. And it was a part of the Roman Empire, it was a part of the Assyrian Empire, and his tribe of people really came from Egypt, and they got to Egypt from the Middle East, and they are most likely from the tribe of Dan. Some say the Ashanti is from the, is from the tribe of Dan, because as I said, all the Israelites were mixing. So some would say that his tribe is Judah, some have said that it's Dan. It could be both, because like I said, the Israelites have mixed, but the point is his tribe of people also came from um, the Middle East, and they may have they came from Israel, and they may have mixed in with the Amorites. It is believed that the Hyksos dynasty of Egypt was at least partially, um, ethnically speaking, Amorites. And so, you look at what you what you see and what you know. Um, but God looks at reality, and He knows that Kenya is a part was a part of the Assyrian Empire and was a part of the Roman Empire, etc. Just like when they speak of um, I, I said before, when they say that, when the Bible says the Assyrian, if you're a prophet and you're a seer and then you are shown a vision, you're writing what you saw. And if you saw the emblem for America, and, but you're a prophet in the Old Testament, you would say the Assyrian because the symbol for America was the symbol for Rome. It was a symbol, the eagle is a symbol of Germany before it was a symbol of of America, and before it was a symbol of Germany, it was a symbol of the Roman Empire in general, which is why you see eagles in um, Egypt. Um, there was a, it's a, it was a symbol and is a symbol for the for the nation of Egypt, and it was also the symbol for the Assyrian Empire, which is why they put in God we trust on our money, because Christians came to, to the government and said, listen, if our country was to ever fall, and people were to come later to try to learn about, you know, the country and to learn about the people because the people no longer exist, so they have to now do archaeological digs. They would assume that it was a country that worshipped Egyptian gods based upon all the things that's on the money and the, the pyramids and all that stuff. So even those Christians back then knew that stuff. The difference between them and us is they, they knew it and they went to the government and said, hey. And so the, they put in God we trust, which... The Christians had to accept that they wanted them to put something about Jesus on the money, and they wanted them to put, like, Jesus, like, statues of him, and, like, really take down that stuff off the money and take it down the statues and all that stuff. They wanted them to be removed and to put more, I guess, statues and things about Jesus, and even in regards to the money, they wanted that stuff removed and have something on there about the Bible or Jesus, but the, they had to settle for in God we trust, which they weren't kind of cool with that because it's like, well, what God are you talking about? So that's just for those of you who are making guesses about who the Antichrist is and the false prophet is, and they say, well, it can't be this because of this, and it can't be this because of that. Um, but in any case, they have said that they're not going to let the person pick the name Peter because they don't want basically that prophecy to come to pass. Um, but if they pick one of the Peters, then it's like, hello, it's still he's still Peter, and he's going to be the Roman, period, because the Vatican is in Rome. So I don't know how they're going to keep that from happening unless they pick someone who does not pick the name Peter and who does not um, have the name Peter as their original name. I do know that they don't give them much time. They come to you and say, you've been picked to be the Pope. What do you want to be called? And you have to like let them know on the spot. Um, but there is the guy in, um, there's Peter Turkson, there's... Um, Tarsicio Bertoni, which is named Tarsicio, really I couldn't find the, the meaning of it other than it might have something to do with Tarsus, like Saul of Tarsus who persecuted the Christians. And some say it's an anagram of Iscariot, which it really is. All the letters in Iscariot, if you kind of rearrange them, it would say Tarsicio. Um, when I look at, when I saw a picture of him, I nearly threw up. I don't believe the man is completely human. Those are my opinions. Um, I do know that the false prophet will be some sort of hybrid or he will definitely have like strong connections with the fallen angels and has been communicating with them and everything else. Um, 
there's a Pedro Scherrer, who's German, but he's Brazil. He's of German descent, but he's Brazilian, and he's, you know, there's apparently Brazil is the largest Catholic country, and so there's, he may be on the list. So those are the three Pedro, the three Peters, and, um, there's another, there's a couple of other people who they may be looking at, Scola or An Angelo Scola, and another guy who I think is French or something, and so we'll see what happens. What I do want to say, though, is that the apostle, and I think I kind of mentioned that early, and then I went somewhere else because I had other information I wanted to give you. The apostle Peter never found the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was founded by Simon Magus, the sorcerer. His family was having some issues and some problems, or his people in general, when they moved into Israel, the, the Babylonians and the Assyrians and stuff, and God began to curse them. And so they decided that, that they would honor Yahweh, but they never stopped honoring their other gods. So basically they became just like the Israelites, because even the Israelites was, were honoring their gods in certain ways. So they said, well, hey, you know. And um, that became a tradition for them. So even in the Middle East, you'll see like the president of Saad of Syria, he comes from a very, like a certain sect of Islam where some Muslims don't really respect them because they have certain Christian things that they do, like certain Christian holidays that they celebrate. That's because his though that tribe of people were Christians before they were Muslims. But before they were before they were Christians, they were like I guess Jews, perhaps I'm not sure, but they were pagans, and so they still to this day they keep their pagan rich witchcraft rituals but they also have a little Christianity and a little Islam. And so that whole mixture, that thing went on for a long time. And so Simon Magus grew up like that, and he tried to buy the Holy Ghost. And, of course, we know what was said to him. You know, Peter was just kind of like, you know, you are in the gall of bitterness, which someone did a very excellent teaching on how it was really a prophecy that Peter was making. And um, so he basically just went back to where he was from and learned and cultivated and grew and became um started mixing Christianity in with, you know, Judaism and, and you know and with and with, with paganism and everything like that and he became the Bishop of Rome. He was headquartered in Jerusalem. And when one of the, the kings or the, the, the Caesars of the Roman Empire did not want to be the head of the church because he felt like Jesus Christ is the head of the church. So how can I be the head of the church? They had to find someone else to do it. And so they decided to bring the Bishop of Rome back from Jerusalem and to bring him back to Rome to head the, the Church of Rome, which was supposed to be the head of, in the, of the church period, because at that point they decided, they decided to make the, the profile of the way they did church at the Church of Rome, they decided to make that the model for the whole church body of Christ as a whole, and so they became the, the Catholic Church, which is just a word that means universal or worldly. Or, you know, so they believe that they are the actual church. And if you're outside of that, then you're just outside of Christ, you know. And, of course, they have many false beliefs. But Peter the Apostle, and this is what the Lord revealed to me at the time when I had no information. It was later that I started reading things on, online and seeing videos online. And people had this information, and I realized, okay, this is known fact. Because at the time, I'm thinking this is just what. You know, it was in my spirit, but I had no, like, evidence or no confirmations. But, of course, now I have many confirmations. And um, so the prophecy will be fulfilled, period. Because whoever runs this church will be a Babylonian mystery high priest of the false religion of mystery Babylon. He will be a sorcerer, a magician, a Satanist, a witch. So when you say Peter the Roman, he's not talking about Simon, who they called Cephas, which means Peter. He's talking about the other Simon who was buried under there at where the Vatican is, because it was a place where they buried the Babylonian priests. And no Christian from that time period would have ever allowed themselves to be buried there. They would have said, throw my body into the ocean, burn it, but don't bury me with no pagans. And then the pagans would have never wanted a Christian person to be buried there. But because he was the high priest of the mystery religion of Babylon, of course he was buried there. That's who's buried there, not the apostle Peter, not the true Simon, who Andrew's brother. <laughs> that he did not start the Catholic Church. He had no parts in the Church of Rome. Okay, it is a lie from the pit of hell. 
Thank you. God bless you. Talk to you later.